All right, welcome back. Uh, thanks for waiting. I was a bit busy, so couldn't do much. So last time we left off on actually having our character set, and we had a little wait thing with the lurping, where we lurp the lair between um, let's see, one to two. That would be idle to walk. All right, so let's actually code a little bit more. We're gonna make a small transition state and once we do that then the next part of the next video is going to be actually making a state machine which will be easier for us to actually use things so right off the bat let's do the main thing and that would be looking at these numbers it's exhausting how would you remember what zero is or what one is or what three is of course it's a small code you will but let's say you had like 25 different animations how are you going to remember then so what we're going to do is we're going to first just take an enum and i'm just going to call it anim underscore state and then i'm going to make two brackets and what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill this up with our animation names so the first one i'm going to call it and when you write enums mostly the practice is that you write them all in um in capitals with um, underscores as your spaces so I'm just gonna make the first one that call it procedural and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this equal to zero so it knows that it is actually also countable so we're gonna make a procedural and then I'm gonna add the rest of them all right all right once you're done with this you also have to add one more and that's gonna be called count so why will we need this? We're going to need this for the number of layers. So if I were to just go here, I'm going to first go in small circle brackets. I'm going to write int. Uh, let's remove that int. And then I'm going to write anim state dot count. And that now, if we hover over it, it's count number equals five. So now we have five animations, zero, one, two, three, four. That's five. Um, and now we can actually switch these things instead. So we're gonna do, again, with our little small brackets, circle brackets, and I'm underscore state dot procedural. And let's just do it for all of these and all of these. So now that we actually have it set up, let's actually also create an instance of the anim state. So we're just gonna call anim state and just call it, I guess, state. It'll be easier for us and we're going to initialize this as dot uh, procedural let's just make it easier for us and what we're going to do is let's make a small little logic and this logic would be something as simple as if input dot is key pressed we're going to choose uh, i guess a w and then we're also going to say if we're also um, pressing let's say shift for our run button so shift we want the state to be so main st uh, st I believe it was called state equals to state dot run and that would mean if we actually press those it's gonna be run else if so if I were to just press W Let's just copy and paste this, save yourself time. Uh, we're going to be state equals to anim state dot walk. All right, now let's make another one. And if, and we have W, right? I mean S, which makes us run backwards. So let's just do the S key. And we call this one state equals to reverse walk and now if we're not pressing anything our default state would be equals to idle all right so now we actually have a whole logic going here so if we're not doing anything it's going to stay in idle and if we press w and if we hold w and shift it's going to be running and if we hold just w it's going to be walking and then if we just press S, it's gonna reverse walk. Now, 
in a few seconds you'll see why that's this is not the best way to write this but just to show you guys we're gonna do it like this now we need one more thing and that is when we actually change the state we want uh, it to change the animation itself so let's just write a method call it like anim changer shouldn't be in all caps anim changer and let's call this as a function uh, void and then changer now there's a few ways to write this stuff but I'm just doing the lazy method so what we're gonna do is just do a little switch and just once you wrote switch press tab and then in the switch on we're gonna write state all right and the moment you press it down it gives us all the states now this is the beauty of uh, having visual studio if you're using uh, any other ones i don't know if they have it but since we have it here we're gonna make it easier for ourselves so first things first we're gonna copy that lerp function that we had and we're gonna just keep writing it in all of them all right all right so now i removed weight so i don't really need it Right, for ease of access of today's tutorial, we're just gonna keep them all one, meaning immediately switch into them. For the next episode, we're gonna show you how to add that logic inside our state machine. And then, as you can see now, we have these numbers, we have no idea what it's talking about. So, we actually use our enums now, which makes it a lot more easier to look at. So I'm just gonna change the first one, and then after that, we're gonna see what it means. So. If you remember last episode, we had the destination, which is our procedural, which is going to be running all the time. And then from, it says from the first layer to the second layer. So for this one, we're going to make it procedural and then we're going to change it to idle. All right, let me just copy paste this and add it to all the other ones. Should have done it before. All right, so now you notice there's also another state called count. We're never going to use this state, so we can just delete it and that should be in that should be okay and now let's change this stuff so from that to idle that looks like okay from this to walk reverse walk and run so now we have everything set up so far in the most primitive way it still works so let's try it out all right, so now we have him idling, and you'll see why the way I wrote the logic doesn't work. So if I press W, he starts running. And immediately, since we have the weight as one, it'll automatically jump into that idle. And now as we don't hold it, it is idle. We press back, it's reverse walking. Now if we hold shift, nothing's happening. But once we press W, he starts running. All right, and if I just drop W, he switches from running to walking. So now this is an okay implementation, but there's a lot of problems. First things first, it's checking every second. We don't need that. It's a waste of space, resources. And the next thing, let's say we're walking and I pressed S, which state does it want to be? It's going to choose the one that's on the lower end. So in our code, the first state is walk and the other one's reverse walk. So if we press both of them at the same time, it's going to choose the one on the bottom. And then at the same time, as I said, it's checking every second. So if we were to have like a little console reading here, you would notice it would be saying it every frame. Waste of memory. So there's a better way to do this. This is just to show you. And now you can see the basics, which is one, we use the enum to change our numbers to make it easier for us to read. And then the other one, we added a little state machine, which helps us do this faster. Now, this was just for a basic. If you are if you like this, you can keep it. But for next episode, we're gonna make it a bit more complicated. It's not as complicated as, you know, making a new AI, but it's good enough that you will understand it. And that would be our state pattern for animation part one. Next episode will be as soon as I finish with work and I have time, probably next week. I am gonna apologize for being late for this one, but I had work, so can't really say much. But anyways, 
nice seeing you guys and love the fact that you all are still waiting for me to make new episodes i am still gonna make new episodes I'm not gonna quit this i love this program and i'm gonna keep going so until next time guys goodbye